EV sales crashed 39%. The end is in sight. EV sales in Norway tank. Is this the end of EVs in Norway? EV sales grow 36% year on year. Is this the end of ICE cars? Well, strangely, all of these headlines are perfectly true. I'll just show how difficult it is to see what is going on. As an EV hater, you'd certainly latch on to the 39% drop in sales, which was actually in Germany. As an EV lover, you'd believe the 36% growth year on year, which was actually Tesla. So what is actually going on? Well, I'm Dave. Welcome to Dave Takes It On and welcome to the mess that is statistics. Well, let me start with our dive into statistics with a silly example, but one that's most often taught. Imagine there's a street of 100 houses and every single person living in this street earns an average wage of £10,000 a year. So in statistics, you could add up all of the earnings and divide by 100. You'd get a mean average of £10,000 a year. You could also list all the earnings by value and choose the median or middle value, which also must be £10,000 a year. Or you could look at the list of earnings and choose the one that occurs the most often, the mode, which is 10,000 yet again in this one example. Now, imagine one house is sold and the new buyer is currently earning a million pound a year. How does that change the average? OK, well, the total earnings for the street is now £1,990,000. So if we divide that by 100, we now get a mean average earnings of £19,900 a year. If we arrange the earnings in order and pick the median or the middle one, we still get 10,000. And if we choose the mode, the one that occurs most often, we also get 10,000 once again. Confused? Oh, it's going to get worse. Well, same street, same 100 houses, but now 50 of them earn £10,000 and 50 of them earn £20,000. The mean average is now 15,000. The median or middle of the list and the mode or most and the modal or most common earnings are both either 10 or 20,000. You can choose either. Now move the millionaire in and it produces different results depending if the millionaire replaces someone who was earning 10,000 or 20,000. If they replace a 10,000 pound a year earner, You'll now have 49 people earning £10,000, 50 earning £20,000 and one earning a million. So the mean average is 24900 The median is either ten or 20000 you can choose, but the modal, the most common, is now 20000 But if the millionaire replaces someone earning 20000 a year, then the mean is now 24800 The median is still either ten or 20000 but the modal is definitely 10000 they are all correct, and that gives us our first big problem. The method you use to quote a figure can give different figures than what common sense would indicate, and a very small change in any one number, one person moving in or out, can have a big impact on the results. Now, the average earnings of 99 out of 100 people has not changed a single penny, but statistics state that the mean average is now almost double. The millionaire will be very unhappy to learn that he is classed as earning around about £20,000 as well. Well, the lesson is clear. You can legally and correctly use figures in many different ways, and each way is valid, and each way can and usually does give very different answers. Well, those of you asking which is the correct method, they all are. Well, the second problem comes from cherry-picking specific data. Well, cherry-picking merely means picking the best. So in our street example, you could look at the new mean average earnings and state that the average earnings of every person on this street has just doubled. Well, that's true. But nobody actually earns a single penny more than they used to. It's just this millionaire moved in. Jerry picking is most often used by politicians to make the outcome look better than it is. It is also usually accompanied by taking a very limited reference point. In this case, the day after a millionaire moves in versus the day before. But then we head very quickly into the third area of confusion. Someone states that this is an up and coming area that has attracted a millionaire to move here. Is that true? And the answer is, we don't know. The data alone does not support the reason why he moved there. 
The averages have all changed and a millionaire has moved in, but nothing in the data tells us why they moved in. Well, what if the new millionaire owner has just inherited the house and out of nostalgia wants to spend some time there before he sells the house, but he'd never consider living there permanently? What if it's a tax scheme? If he moves in, claims it as his primary residence, he can sell it without paying capital gains tax. What if his employment has already ended, he's just serving out his notice, so still earning a million pound a year, and this is the best he can afford once his salary ends? The area has not attracted a millionaire. So welcome to the interpretation of data. Well, data is data. The millionaire has moved in, the mean average has nearly doubled, but those facts do not tell us why he moved there. Here again, many will choose to interpret the results to make their case stronger or to mislead people from the real truth, or to sell more papers or get more views. And often the real reason remains unknown. The millionaire will not tell us why they moved in, meaning both sides can claim their version as the truth. Now, it is the interpretation of the data that gives us the biggest problem. So what do we do or should we do to find the truth? And the answer is some basic research. Look at the opening examples. Germany EV sales crashed by 39%. But when? Well, if that was a single month and all other months show strong growth, you could dismiss that as an anomaly. If there's an underlying reason for a crash, well, in this case, the month before, Germany ended their subsidy of EVs totally overnight. Well, then a crash in new sales is entirely predictable and completely expected. Nothing to do with the overall picture. Well, we say Norway sales have dropped sharply. That's true. That's because everyone already has an EV. And because they're all fairly new, those who have one will keep it for several years. So no new buyers. No existing owners upgrading means sales will drop. End of EVs? Well, certainly not. Everybody has one. Well, VW and Ford can't sell EVs and are stopping production. Is that the end of EVs? Well, no. If you lose a significant sum of money on every single EV you sell, it's crazy to carry on. That leads to an early bankruptcy. The sensible approach would be to stop selling them, find out why they are losing money, and then correct that issue. If they can't correct the issue, then the future is indeed bleak and very limited. As a prime example, take Kodak. Once they were the world's largest manufacturer of professional and amateur colour film for cameras with a multi-billion dollar turnover and a very healthy billion dollar plus profit. With the arrival of the digital camera, Kodak ploughed on with the true grit, believing that digital could never overtake their top-of-the-range professional films, the market for life. They refused to change anything they did, believing they were right in the long run, and they were wrong. Rapidly, the quality of the digital image improved, and within a few years, was actually coming better than the old-fashioned film. Well, today, can you even imagine putting in a roll of film with 24 or 36 frames, taking pictures, not knowing if they're going to come out, then sending it away to a local chemist or professional lab and waiting for a few days to see if you got actually any good pictures? Today, we snap hundreds of pictures every day, get instant results. We probably delete more photographs every day than we used to take in a month when we were using film. Multi-billion giants can collapse very quickly. So, what is my opinion of the state of EV sales? As a first step, I no longer look at every single sales result or prediction, but instead, I've started to look into the money. See, governments around the world are all investing heavily in EVs and the infrastructure. USA introduced its Inflation Reduction Act, giving billions to EV manufacturers and EV charging networks. We in the UK have given millions or billions to EV charging networks. But even more telling than governments, who might have their own agenda, are the private investors. Well, this includes the big funds, the banks, the fund managers, the investment houses, the private equity companies.
If you look at Blackstone, no, not Blackwater, that's a military contractor, or Black Horse, that's a major UK lender in the motor, motor industry, or Black Rock, that's a different investment house. Blackstone advertises that it is a forward-looking company that holds over $1 trillion of assets under management and offers long-term growth to all its investors. And they have just, a for they've just formed a partnership with Apple Green Electricity, which is solely involved in EV chargers. Now, again, Apple Green Group, separate company, buy up motorway services and hotels. They deal with petrol mainly. Apple Green Electricity deals with EVs, renewable energy and EV chargers only. They are on a rapid expansion of EV chargers in the UK and Europe. Gridserve also received a huge half billion investment from the UK's largest investment fund dedicated to everything renewable, green and EVs. They are professionals and would appear to know what they're doing, much better than my relatively casual analysis. BP Pulse is also on a rapid expansion. This is the EV branch of BP Petrochemical. Now, if a petrochemical giant is investing heavily in all things green and cutting back on investing in new oil fields, they must know something. I previously launched a video showing their 2023 Energy Outlook report. This is their report, and almost every single page states cutbacks, reduced demand, greater emphasis on clean and green, and a huge emphasis on climate change. It really makes for sobering reading for the petrochemical industry and the legacy ice auto industry. So, forget for the moment daily, weekly, monthly sales figures, they'll vary wildly. One day country X is booming, next day it'll be country Y. When a ship carrying EVs arrives in Europe from, say, China, expect a sudden increase in sales. When a factory shuts down for an update or refresh on new equipment, expect a large drop in output. When that machine or process comes online, expect a sharp rise. It's constantly changing. But the investment banks and the houses invest for growth in the future, not today. Today's figures are irrelevant. And for them, green or renewable, or green and renewable, is their future. My overall conclusion from looking at the money is a legacy industry, ice cars and the petrochemical industry are on the way out and really quite rapidly. They will not disappear altogether in the next decade, but they will not look anything like they do today. The future of transport is renewable energy and zero pollution at source. That is absolutely set in stone. Aircraft, not yet, but soon. Shipping, yeah, definitely, and that one will be sooner. Heavy transport, very definitely, and really soon. Bulldozers and tractors, absolutely, they're already on the market. Now, an awful lot of EVs are not financially viable at the moment for many people. But neither was the Tesla Roadster when it launched at over $100,000. Well, new EVs now are heading down into the 20,000s and below. And used EVs are showing up now below £10,000 in the UK. There are many, many Teslas on offer in the £15,000 range. This is the average price of a UK used car sale in the UK. A Tesla Model 3, average price in the used car market. Well, about hydrogen? Yes, yeah, certainly. There's nothing wrong with using excess electricity to store energy in the form of hydrogen. But very few grids have a lot of excess capacity worth mentioning, and all currently have cheaper ways of storing it. It's mainly grid-connected batteries. But it's not here today. Even Toyota appear to accept that. Yeah, they make new announcements, but there are no new hydrogen models in the showrooms today. Definitely not, and in my opinion, probably never really will. Our needs are for today, and the only answer is EVs. Like it or not, they are the future. They will only get better and cheaper. If they're not for you today, don't buy one. Have another look next year.
EVs are the only proven technology today that can provide transport for the masses. Therefore, they must replace ICE cars at an increasing pace as EV prices drop. Yeah, this month they're still way too dear, but used EVs are really coming down. A stop press. Tesla just announced an investor day. Absolutely no clue as to what it will cover for tomorrow, the day this video will launch. What are my best guesses? Well, I have three choices. First, full self-driving and robo-taxis, which will cause a paradigm shift in our transport into the future. Or it could be the official launch of the Optimus robot, which will dramatically lower EV prices, making them a no-brainer for the mass market. Or third, it will be launching the details of which factories will be making the new Model 2, where, when and how many. Let's see if any of these are right, and if so, which one? I'm Dave. Well, thanks very much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, please click the like button. And if you'd like to see more, please subscribe and click the notification bell so we can notify you next time we launch a video. And a massive thank you to all our Patreon supporters. It is your support that enables us to go out and make these videos for you. So thank you very much for your contribution. I'm Dave.